Arthur. Arthur! Are you busy, Arthur? Why? Well, I know you think I'm just some effete buffoon. What? A man of words and not of action. Hardly a man at all. Well, I think you're as slippery as an eel in an oil slick, but still a man. Because I think I've... I've found something interesting. Yeah? Have you ever robbed a stagecoach? No, never. Well, who would have even thought? Of course I robbed a goddamn stagecoach. <laughs> you know I have. And what's the problem with stagecoaches? The armed man attempting to put a bullet in your head? Not quite. The odds. I mean, is it worth the robbing? Sometimes. I know. But, well, if you'd like to come with me, I can introduce you to a new best friend, and he's he's going to give you all the decent, robbable stagecoaches a hot-blooded degenerate could require. Well, I could require a whole lot. So where do we find this friend of yours? Rhodes. Because what can possibly go wrong there? Well, lead the way and we'll find out. Good work, boy. Well, let's go then. You sure seem to have got about around here. You know me. I like to make friends in low places. How the hell you end up down here anyway? I could ask the same of you. I have a few commitments over this way. Some expenses to meet. Expenses? What expenses? Gentlemen's canes and rabbits to pull out of hats? Among other things, I had quite a nice little business going for a while. Shares in a gold mining company. Excellent returns for the investor of a certain financial standing. Until, well, that unfortunate run-in with the law. Yeah, that's how it goes. Thanks for disappearing on us during that Sean business, by the way. I'd done my part. Each to their strengths, dear boy. You know, you boys should really watch yourselves with those two families. This is a small town. People talk. I tried to mention it to Osea, but you know how he is. Anyway, while they're off chasing their pot of Confederate gold hidden at the end of some rainbow, let me present you with something real. So, where exactly are we going? The train station. The clerk there, Alden, is quite a fellow. And very informed on the comings and goings of coaches around these parts. Ah, I see. can hitch up outside. I'll make the introductions, Arthur. Good. Come on. Hang back a bit and let me do the talking. We don't want to scare him off. Oh, I almost forgot. Bill asked me to give you a message to meet him here in town as soon as you can. Something to do with the craze. I thought I'd nab you first. You did? Okay. Thanks. Alden. Hello, Josiah. How have you been? Dandy. And you, friend? Uh, like I said, times are tough. My missus is a bad woman. Terrible woman. 
They often are. But how's work, Alden? Terrible. Wages got cut again. They reckon they just invented a new horse's carriage will be the end of us. <laughs> They've been saying that nonsense since they invented the wheel. The wickedness of bosses. I know. My comrades here and I are greatly discouraged from the adequate fulfillment of our duty. A discouraged man is no man at all, Alden. No man at all. My friend Arthur here has a present for you. Ain't you kind, sir. Call him Arthur. He's one of us, a fellow man of distinction. Okay. Well, this is perfect timing. I think you'll like this one, Josiah. It'll be coming south down the river road through Siltwater Strand. Thank you, Alden. Thank you very much. Oh, and Josiah, if you or Arthur are ever out Strawberry Way, ask for my colleague there. Feller called Hector. He's also one of the, what did you call us again? Discouraged men, Alden. That's it, discouraged men. I like that. Well, goodbye, Alden, or should I say, adieu. Oh, adieu, Josiah. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Commissioner. River Road through Siltwater Strand, he said. Okay. I think I know a good spot to wait. Follow me. You're too far back there. I was afraid you didn't want to join me. What did I tell you? Simple as can be. Seems a lot of the station workers are in on it these days. Earning a pittance, the unions are whipping them up, so they want something on the side. Like he said, there, strawberry. Could create a lot of opportunities for a man in your line of work. I ain't sure about going back to strawberry after all that market business. Didn't sound like you left anyone alive to recognize you, so I wouldn't worry too much, dear boy. All this trouble, you gentlemen are becoming quite the celebrities, aren't you? Soon you'll be on the front of a dime novel. And dead, of course. We're hoping to be long gone before that. Dutch has a plan. If anything goes wrong, let's meet back here at this crossroad, okay? All right. This should do. Sure. Here. I'm hoping we won't need those. Well, better safe than sorry. So what were you thinking? Well, according to this, the loot is located in a strong box, which is in the back. I'll put on a little performance, and you can scurry around, open the strong box, and relieve them of their goodies. And how do I open the strong box without threatening someone to open it for me? This should work. <laughs> And I can do this silently? Well, I'm hoping complete silence won't be necessary. But you're going to wish you had your earplugs. This is Damson. Oh, very good, Alden, very good. Of course, if anything goes wrong, you can wave your guns around like you normally do. Hold tight. They'll be here soon. There it is. Right on time. Let's go. Keep your distance so they don't see you. And... Please leave that gun in its holster for once. All right ahead. 
ahead and get the coach to stop. You hang back. Don't let them spot you or you'll scupper the whole thing. fools who believe Westerners don't know anything about culture. I couldn't agree more. Mrs. Damson, magnifico. So sorry, gentlemen, for the interruption. Farewell. Done. It was easy. You did all the work. Teamwork, my dear boy. Teamwork. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, it's only good. Go see Alden from time to time. See you soon, Arthur.
Whiskers are all the fashion now, from what I hear. You won't get a part sharper than that. Man's whiskers can make or break his whole deportment, you know. We can do up all the latest trends. Yeah. 
That's pretty decent. All right, you're ready to go. What? Tickets are available, if you're interested. Now buy a ticket, please. Head straight through those double doors. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. I am your host, Aldridge T. Abington. Thank you. Yes, Aldridge T. Abington. Few men have had a career more crowded with incident and various intercourse with the world than I. During extensive travel through this and foreign lands, I have procured a show so fantastical, there exists nothing like it, anywhere. In an effort to bring this entertainment to even the poorest dreamer of dreams, I have determined the ticket price should be very low, and the show held without a profit. To me, it's true, for it is blessing enough to bring these gifted artists to you. I discovered this next act in a tiny village in Italy. Truly the most exotic of places in the world. He was just a 10-year-old boy. I raised him. I bathed him. I shaved him from head to toe. He is truly a wonder to behold. Presenting Benjamin. Lazarus! <laughs> welcome! Welcome! Welcome to my incredible display of dark arts and mystical prowess, my dear ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's unfortunate fact that in this mortal coil we are all born to suffer from all manner of maladies in daily life. Who here has not had a friend or loved one near death's door from coal gas fumes, typhoid fever, diphtheria, or the bite of a rabid animal? The greatest wealth is your health. All the gold in the world cannot purchase it, and yet it is the most delicate and tenuous of all life's gifts. And nothing knocks down death's door faster than this. <laughs> a man cannot outrun a bullet. Many fools have tried and failed in this endeavor, including the tonic salesman I caught bedding my wife. I joke. I joke. <laughs> I assure you.
assure you, he has met his maker, and they are playing gin rummy among the molten lava of Hades. Oh, <laughs> I have traveled all around the world, this delighting young and old, with all manner of feats of amazement, but none are as dangerous as what I am prepared to attempt tonight. I will hand this Didi Packenbush revolver over to my assistant and stand at considerable distance across the stage. She will point the revolver at my head and pull the trigger using lightning quick reflexes taught to me by a tiny man I met in the distant Orient. I will catch the bullet in my teeth. Bring somebody yes. my teeth. To prove that these are indeed live rounds, if my sharpshooting assistant would be so kind as to shoot this bottle of Lalicola off my head. This is insane. Yeah! Off my head. Here we go! Oh, yeah! I could do without a bullet in the brain right now. Okay. Oh my god, you yeah, what? Oh my god! This is the best. <laughs> That's it always scares me. <laughs> now, observe as I the great Benjamin Lazarus will do what no man has ever done and cheat death as if it were nothing. What is he doing? Do that again. Hmm? Right. Hmm. Oh, I can't take it. <sighs> Dang Balderdash. Ooh, ah. <laughs> A skeptic. Hmm? I'm trying to watch the show. And Benjamin Lazarus. I assure you, I am not participating in some hoax or carnival rules. These bullets are 100% real. In fact, I challenge any member of the audience to come forward with their own firearm, and I will yet again display my uncanny skill to catch a bullet in my teeth. Ain't no show better. Is no one man enough? Come on, someone, stand up and take a shot. Okay, okay. If nobody else is gonna expose this phony, then I will. I trust you are a good shot, sir. I can shoot a fly's wings off at a hundred paces. Excellent, my good man. Now, ready? <clears throat> Take aim. A feat of incredibility. I told you that boy would bring you all manner of personal satisfaction. He certainly does me. <laughs> now, I discovered this next remarkable woman in a lost jungle, <laughs> deep in the wilds of Colombia, where they do not wear clothes. She breathes fire. Yes, she does. And for those with the universal and not unworthy curiosity, yes, I can attest, she does emit fire from almost every orifice in her body. <laughs> Presenting Antoinette 
San Servino. Oh, wonderful! Oh, incredible! It's still hot in here, huh? <laughs> incredible! Bravo! Though I must warn you, court her at your peril. She'll not nurse babies, she'd turn them into bacon! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. He liked that joke. Yes. I discovered this next woman in the kingdom of Poland where she sang by the roadside, subsisting on coppers tossed at her feet. Miss Robin Koninsky! Thanks for joining us today. This here was a new song about a so-called modern improvement you may have become aware of called the telephone. Yeah. This new machine will carry a facsimile of your voice from Blackwater to Valentine to Saint Denis, and they propose to distribute them to all manner of places so that no matter where you are, somebody is looking for you. A wise man prayed that one day we may all eventually be gathered together in a heaven of everlasting rest and peace and bliss, except for the inventor of the telephone. 
because someone is always calling, saying, hello, hello. I've got a little baby, but he's out of sight. I talk to him across the telephone. I can't see my honey, but he's mine all right. This gal just can't leave a man alone. Blackwater calling. Hello. This morning through the phone they said he'd been with Bess and told me exactly where he's at. Now I'm headed out of town to his address. I sure do worry that the wires might get crossed and it will separate me from my baby mine. Then What a fine tune. She is a siren singing from the rocks as men bash into them Woo! to their yeah, doom. Right. Thank you for joining me for tonight's entertainment. I hope it has delayed for at least a moment the crushing and remorseless misery of this mortal coil. Good night. Dream well and come back soon. Why don't you come on back tomorrow?
want to vote. I insist that I deserve the right to vote. My, what a truly lovely day. Oh. I'll take the heat over rain any day. Bonjour. Good-looking horse there. If you want me to keep that overnight, there's room in the stable. Okay? Some grooming goes a long way. It looks nice. Seen quite a few horses coming through with spades and all. Look after your horse good. Be damn sure it'll look after you. Hey there. Where you at? Yup. Looking mighty fine. Little fine grooming always sets off a horse. Mama, would you move, please? That's a good looking horse now. Make your horse happy. Best to have a good saddle that'll hold up. Folks come from all over for our services. I got one of them myself. Always good to have one of those. Enjoy. Working with animals is better than working with people, sometimes.
Good saddles is almost as important as a good horse. Good choice. Better the saddle, better the ride. That's a nice addition on a saddle. Nice. You only live once, lest you're a cat. Adding on to a saddle helps personalize it. Daddy was a blacksmith, right here in this shop. That's how I got learning it. I got one of them myself. Good. Always good to have one of those. I hear folks say this town is on the skids, but I don't see it. I got one of them myself. Appreciate it. I see you, friend. I'll help you out presently. Be a lot easier for you once you're all square. What can I do for you? Enjoy your trip.
Someone's gonna help us Look out! out. I was wondering when you'd be back. Well, who do we have here? That's a fine steed. Got some room in the stable here. I'll give you a fair price. Oh, you'd be wise to buy one from me. You'd have to be crazy to regret buying a beautiful horse like this. gonna want a saddle that fits for you and the horse. High quality, keep it simple. You won't go wrong. As soon as you sit down, you're gonna wonder why you didn't buy this sooner. That's the same one I use too. go real well with the saddle. Okay. I can't tell you how many times I use that one. That's the same one I use, too. All right, done. sure to let everyone know where you got this nag groom. Don't find anyone better with horses than me. That's a fact. Mm. 
Got a fancy streak, huh? Yeah, good looking horse now. Oh, the horse will really like this. It's well worth the price. I'll miss that no. egg. Real good one. Choice. This is fast acting. Damn, but these will work a long, hard day. Something to behold. Thanks, partner. Yep. Queasy feeling you've been having? Think that's cause there's so many O'Driscolls about. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, hold still, girl. Need a ride? I can get you there. So, partner, can I get a ride? Where are we headed, friend? Can I get a ride into Rhodes, please? <laughs> oh, boy. That'll be quite the fare. Hop in. Go! No, real good. Like, better than usual. Well, I bathed just for you. I'm being genuine, Bill.
Where is that son of a bitch? <sighs> Be late to his old funeral, that one. been waiting for you, Arthur. Well, I'm sorry to have kept you. Come on, let's get going. What's the plan? We're meeting a couple of the Greys over at the saloon. They spoke to Bill about a job. Needing some security. After the farce of stealing the horses for them, why are we doing this? Because we need to stay in with them, and they're paying. So what kind of security they want? We're about to find out. Now come on. This seem legit to you, Bill? Sure. Dutch said we was to keep on dealing with them until we find this gold. Can we trust them? Can we trust anyone? Yeah. Let's just see what they say. They said there was some big misunderstanding about them horses. And what did they board in their fields? They don't know we had anything to do with that. Oh, uh, that's so? Yeah. They think it was the Braithwaite's. Listen, I know these great boys a bit now. This is on the level. We're stuck in the middle of some ancient feud, but instead of playing both sides, we're being used by both of them. They were saying that Catherine Braithwaite... Hey, hold up. This don't feel right. Now it don't feel right. I could have told you... <laughs> Job done. You call this getting the job done? 
You see Bill anywhere? No! Shit! You ain't getting out of this. Back in this! This is some damn posse the Greys rounded up. I've had to deal with these sons of bitches sooner or later. Just turned out to be sooner. See that? Those cowards are running away. Looks like most of them. Not all of them. Sheriff Gray. And what about Bill? Where the hell's he? We'll find him later. Come on. Sheriff Gray! You need to get a hold on this town. It's going to hell. Who do you think you are? Bunch of two big thugs from God knows where? You took time to think we don't know what you've been doing. Come out, Sheriff. It's over. We put down far worse than you a hundred times over. This is the Grays town. Always has been, always will be. Only Grays I see left around here is you. You want us to come out? We'll come out. Yeah. Oh, Bill. Guns on the ground now. Both of you, don't do it. You know we can't do that. You put the gun down, Sheriff. I'll blow his brains out. You want to join your little friend there, do you? Either way, you're a dead man. Morgan? How the hell was I to know? Let me see. They set us up once before. They didn't like us. We destroyed their farm. Should I go on? Go easy on him, Morgan. He was out trying to find a lead. Same as you. Same as Hosea. All you do is complain when things don't work out. Except when it's your goddamn fault. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't give a damn about nobody but yourself. Oh, you act so high and mighty, but you're no better than the rest of us. I've ridden with you boys close on what, six months now? And all you ever done was complain. And you can fight, but you can't think. You can't do either. <laughs> okay, cowpoke. Bill, take the boy's body. Bury him proper someplace quiet. <clears throat> Maka? Best you and I don't speak for a moment. <laughs> I'm just so frightened by you. Get out of my sight, pair of fools. He was like an annoying little brother to me. What fun we had riding together. What a goddamn mess we are making of things. Yeah.
think about a real job? <laughs> I can't imagine something worse than slumming with the rest of the idiots. Well, yeah. I ain't moving. Yeah. Arthur, have you seen the boy, Jack? No. Where's my goddamn son? Where is he? Where's my son? They took him, didn't they? They took my son. Who took him? We think the Braithwaite woman took him. Oh. Like Kieran saw a couple of fellows sound like Braithwaite boys. Where's my son? If anything, uh, where is my son, Dutch Vandalin? We will find him, we will bring him back to you, and we will kill any fool that had the temerity to touch one hair on that boy's head. Abigail, you have my word. Just get me back, my son. I will get that boy back, so help me God. Right now. Dutch, we just heard about Jack. You need some extra guns? Yeah, why not? Micah, Kieran, anyone strange turns up, you kill him. The rest of you, let's ride. Okay, let's go get that boy back. They must have figured out what we was up to, Dutch. Yeah, we just got shot to hell by the Greys in town. I know, I heard about John too. I don't want to even think about that right now. We have to focus on Jack. I swear, I'll kill everyone there. Easy, John. Try to stay calm. I'm fine. How the hell did they get to him? I don't know, but we are getting him back and they will pay. I promise you that. What about the gold? Who gives a damn about the gold? They got Jack! I hate to break it to you, but I don't think there is any gold. Or if there is, it's hidden somewhere no one knows. What? I've turned every stone. Christ's sake, Hosea. After all that... Another perfect scam. We underestimated them. No, they underestimated us. Enough talk. There is no point arguing how we got here. This is where we are, and we are going to fix it. So come on. Sean, now Jack. We should have stayed out of all of this. Bit late for that, ain't it? Quiet. We're going to fix this right now. Like they don't know we're coming. Arthur, are you coming or what? We don't have all day. Arthur. Arthur, we can't do this without you. Come on, let's get this done. John, you sure you're okay? Like I said, I'm fine. 
Follow my lead. Both these redneck families think they can ruin us? I don't think so. There they are. Who steals a goddamn boy? I'm gonna let fly at those sons of bitches! Don, I need you to stay calm. Get down here now! You inbred trash! What the hell do you want? Easy, John. We've come for the boy. You must have known we would. You shouldn't have messed with our business now, should you? Whatever complaint you have with us, alleged, or otherwise, that is a young boy. That is not the way you do things. Hand him over. Get the hell off our land. If you ain't gonna be civilized about this... Jack? Oh, shit!
told you there's no getting in this way without it locked. Where's the boy? We have lived in this house for 120 years. We never had no problems except by Where gang Where is the boy? Who took him? You killed my son. Oh, and I will surely kill the rest of them unless you start talking. Oh, I know your time. Common scum. Where is the boy? You filth. All right. We get her out of here. What about down? Now let's get this hag outside. Any more of her sons to deal with? No, I reckon they're all dead. That's right. Burn this dog. You boys sure jack in here. You got that one, Arthur? I guess that's the end of the goddamn cribbage game. <laughs> Take the boy, Mrs. Braithwaite. You stole Boys my Boys are off liquor. limits. You stole my horses. Ain't no rules in war, mister. Matthews. Yes, yes, that's it. Where's the boy? My sons gave him to Angelo Bronte. So my guess is Saint Denis. Either there or on my boat to Italy. Let's go. Arthur, come on! What are we doing with her? Leave her. I told you she was crazy. <laughs> It's gonna work out, John. It's gonna work out. Listen to Dutch. Now, I don't expect you to understand this, but I have never been more proud of you than I am right now, brother. You're doing the right thing. If I don't get that boy back safe, um, she, she'll kill us all. I know, but looking at this, logically, well, that boy is fine. They took him to scare us. Nobody takes a boy to harm him. He's right, John. What do you think, Arthur? The boy will be fine, but well, of course Marston's scared rotten. We, we killed all those people. We stirred up all that trouble <laughs> for nothing. No, no, not for nothing. For living. Now we get that boy back, and we go. 
Trust me. Hey, Dutch, we got a problem. Not a problem. Visitors, a solution. Good day, fine people. Mr. Vanderlind, Mr. Matthews, I presume. And who are you? Rip Van Winkle. Huh. Good day, sir. Agent Milton, Pinkerton Detective Agency. Agent Ross. Ah, Mr. Morgan, nice to see you again. And to what do we owe the pleasure, Agent Moron? I don't know if you're aware, but this... This is a civilized land now. We didn't kill all them savages only to allow the likes of you to act like human dignity and basic decency was outmoded or not yet invented. This thing, it's done. This place ain't no such thing as civilized. It's man, so in love with greed, he has forgotten himself and found only appetites. And as a consequence, that lets you take what you please, kill whom you please, and hang the rest of us? Who made you the messiah to these lost souls you've led so horribly astray? I'm nothing but a seeker, Mr. Milton. You ain't much of anything more than a killer, Mr. Vanderlind. But I came to make a deal. It's time. You come with me, and I give the rest of you three days to run off disappear and go and live like human beings someplace else. You came for me? Risk life and limb in this den of lowlifes and murderers so that they might live and love? <sighs> Ain't that fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill all these folk, Dutch. Just you. In that case, it would be my honor to join you. Excuse me, friends. I have an appointment to keep with. I think your new friend should leave now, Dutch. You're making a big mistake, all of you. <laughs> yeah, dreadful. We have got something. Something to live and die for. How awful for us. Mr. Milton, stop following us. We'll be gone soon. I'm afraid I can't. And when I return, I'll be with 50 men. All of you will die. Run away from this place, you fools. Run. Come on. Get your damn hands off of me, boy. What now? We get out of here. And quick. Any ideas? I know a big old house. Hidden in the swamps outside Saint Denis. I'm sure they'll find us eventually, but it should buy us a few days. A few days is all we need. There's a spot out by Shady Bell. Lenny and I got into that dispute with the previous occupiers. Place is well hidden. You and Arthur, ride out to make sure no one else has moved in. Lenny, you go follow those fools out of here. Make sure that they leave. And John, we'll get Jack back, and we'll get going. Rest of you, get packing! Come on, John. This is crazy. We'll get packed up, but we need a new spot, Arthur.
Follow me. I know the way. It's gonna be all right, John. We should be going for Jack. We will. We have to move everyone first before that bastard Milton comes back with an army. We ain't no use to Jack in jail. We're at the end of a rope. I don't even know what to think no more. Just gotta keep our cool. Be smart about this. I knew that, buddy. Like you were saying before, Too much noise once again. We drew him right to us. I mean, how many people we killed in the past few weeks? Far too many. It's Dutch playing his games. Hosea, too. Get involved with those two families. Master con men working their magic. They thought there was a lot of gold. Yeah, they thought there was money. Ain't there always? Careful, Arthur. Look, Marston, I don't know what to tell you. Things don't always work out. That ain't nothing new. Jack's gone. We lost Sean, Mac, Davy, Jenny. And for what? We can't change what's done. We can only move on. But one day, we need to start learning from our mistakes. Come on, it ain't all bad. We've had a rocky run. We'll be okay. We'll get through it. <laughs> Dutch will fix it. Dutch will come up with a big plan. Right now, every plan gets us into worse trouble. We're getting further from where we're meant to be going. Now, you can't put all this on Dutch. You're worked up, and rightly so. Just don't get too far in your head with all this. You'll never get out. It's a goddamn mess. That poor kid. We chose this life. He didn't. I don't know. I think this life chose us. You, me, Dutch, Hosea. It's been a long time now. Sure has. Lots changed. I sometimes wonder if things was ever the way we remembered them. If we were ever who we thought we was. Like I told you, don't go down a rabbit hole with this, Marston. That won't help nothing. I treated Jack bad. Abigail, too. I didn't want to believe he was mine. You know, when I was lost on that mountain after Blackwater, part of me thought, I could just leave again and no one would ever know. But some wolves thought otherwise. Look, you're here now, and this spot we're going to is close to San Denis. As soon as we get the others safe, we'll find this Bronte and get Jack back. All right, she'll be just down this path to the left here. So, you were something. Huh? Come on. Very funny for you. What is this place? Lenny found it. Big old run down plantation house. That's it up ahead. Four walls and a roof. We're moving up in the world. You ain't seen inside it yet. Come on. The sooner we get this done, the better. You sure this place is empty? I ain't sure on nothing. Let's leave the horses here and take a look. Oh, shit! It's them again! Boys! Get them ah! Ah! Damn it! Still some here! I can see that! You think there's more of them? I'll check the house. You keep watch out here. Get out of here! Now, go! Okay. <clears throat> go! Any more of you upstairs? I'm coming for you! You hear me? Come out where I can shoot you! I knew you'd You're the up. one hiding, I'm me! You are some other coward. Like you. The bounty hunters. The freedmen.
How's it looking up there? I think we're clear. Good. Come help me with this, will you? Give me a hand moving these bodies. Don't want the others walking into this. Are you gonna help me carry these in? Follow me. All right, this way. We'll dump the bodies in the swamp over there. Okay, I can deal with the rest of the bodies. You go meet up with the caravan, guide them in. We got fine living. Ignore the corpses and the alligators. It's paradise. I love it. Miss Grimshaw, Mr. Pearson, would you two kindly work your magic? Arthur, take a ride with me. Sure. Come on. George? Yes? Could I have a word with you? <clears throat> Not now. She wants to talk. Everything okay with you two? I got far more important things to worry about right now than Molly O'Shea. So, where are we going? To take a look at this eighth wonder of the civilized world, San Denis, I keep hearing about. According to the map, the road up this way should lead us right in there. All right. I guess this day ain't over yet. Not quite. Good work back there, Arthur. Everything went okay? A few loose ends. Nothing major. And John? About what you'd expect. He's taking it hard. We are going to get that boy back. Whatever it takes. I need you to start asking around in the city for Bronte. Subtly, of course. Public places. Maybe start with the saloon. Anyone who can put us in contact with him. Of course. What about the Pinkertons? I'm fairly sure nobody followed us. We moved out fast. We should be safe for a few days here. And then? I think we need to move a little further. Put some ocean between us and all of this. The mess with those two families. Losing Sean. I see things differently now. For a long time, I truly believed a paradise lay somewhere in the west for us.
but I just don't know anymore. So we're leaving the country now? Maybe. I'm still thinking about it. Whatever we do, we'll need more money. In any case, we have more pressing matters to attend to first. Okay, there she is. A real city. The future. Big cities. They're always repellent. Exactly. I'll find you in there. Go see what you can figure out. Yes. Hello, mister. How do you do? Let's go. I'm looking for Gavin. He's my best friend. He left me. I lost him. I mean, I lost him. Someone must have seen an Englishman. <laughs> really funny he is. <laughs> Hello, sir. Listen, have you seen... I'm looking for my friend, Gavin. I don't know any Gavins, I'm afraid. English bloke. Lovely fella. He went missing, and uh, now I'm all alone. Good luck. That's, uh, that's too bad. Girl? Gavin! What are you doing there? Come on, what's gotten into Ooh. you? Excuse me, I'm trying to find a man named Bronte. You know the name? Bronte? No, don't think so. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Hey there. Have you ever heard of a man called Angelo Bronte? Hmm, no. But fancy name like that? Maybe try the Bastille Saloon. Opposite the park with the Quincy Harris statue. Okay, thank you. Let's get.
Stick him up, cowboy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, real funny, Dutch. Oh, I thought so. So, here we are in a strange land of papists and rapists. America's very own Gamora. This yeah, city's all of the same to me. So, how you get on? I've been asking around about Mr. Bronte. And from what I've heard, this establishment is our best lead, but I haven't had any joy in there so far. So, I should just give it a shot? I think so. Just keep it cool. You know me? I'll meet you back here in Nan. You should say that. <laughs> well, you know how it is. I hey, told can I get a drink here? That's the state of Lamont for you. America's dirty little French secret. <laughs> that's Hello? Secret. That's why we love it. Born and raised. Mm. Well, I'm sorry. Please excuse me. I, I, I seem to have some very impatient customers. Now, how can I help? You look like a whiskey man. Sure. Dollar, please. For a whiskey? Oh, that's the real stuff. Scott. Okay. Here, have one for yourself. Well, right, thank you. So, mister, if I ask you a question, you ever hear of a fella by the name of Bronte? <laughs> Who's asking? Me. I'm asking. No, leave it, Fred. What do you mean, leave it? Look, I don't know what business you in, but leave it, Fred. You and your pal that was in here before. Bronte? Angelo Bronte? Mr. Big, Mr. Italian, spaghetti eating, long streak of piss big. Yeah, he makes my skin crawl. I'm so squally, a cocksucker. You know what I mean, friend? Where can I find him? Oh, well, I reckon you talk to them kids in the alley, they'll know I get. Oh, hey, friend, you, you be careful now. Immigrants, they're not to be trusted. Come on now, this sulking doesn't become you. You always have to be right, don't you? Pardon me, but have you seen any kids around this way? Yeah, I think I heard a few in the other courtyard up ahead. You can get through on the left there. You got a cigarette, mister? Maybe. Huh? I'm looking for a fellow named Angelo Bronte. I tell you. I know him. Everyone knows him. Where is he? We'll take you to him. What it'll cost. I reckon I can pay. Five dollars. Where's he live? New York? I'm an entrepreneur. If you don't want to pay, then I don't want to walk. Oh, man. Some bad bread. Here. Come on. This away. Let's go, mister. You coming, Cleet? Stay close. Easy to get lost around here. Come on, then. You new to the city, mister? Pretty much. Don't worry. No one knows it as good as me and Cleet. Is that right? Hope you won't need his services, but you got the doctor on the corner there. Nice enough, fella. That's Baird and Schreiber on the right there. Famous bookstore. Not that I'm much of a reader myself. Now over here's a real piece of art. That's the Church of the Holy Blessed Virgin, mister. Modeled on the famous church in Toulouse, which is in France. You been to Toulouse, mister? No. We're Catholics here, mister. Ain't Baptist or nothing. My mama said they used to burn Protestants and all, but, uh... Bet they don't have nothing so fine where you come from, mister. Look at them fine! Hey, hey, you little bit of shit! Get going! He's coming after us! I'll kill you, you thieving bastard! Shit. You're making a fool 
Warning, boy. Oh, so it must be true. Fellas, you seen a kid come through here about 14, 15? Oh, yeah, he ran right to us, ran around the corner there. Thanks, boy. What are you talking about, friend? I ain't your friend, but that kid is, and he robbed from me. Now give me back my stuff and take me to Angelo Bronte. Senor Bronte. That kid was gonna show me before he robbed me. <gasps> Ow. Come on! You new in town, mister? Come on. Mr. Bronte's got a lot of friends, mister, but I ain't never seen you. We ain't friends. <laughs> you don't like no one, mister. Mr. Bronte, he's got fine hair. He got a beautiful house, and I am proud to work for him. He got 50 men, mister. Why are you gonna care a thing about you? I just want to speak with him. <laughs> I'm sure you do, mister. You and them friends of yours been asking about him all over town. He been mighty disrespected. Bunch of muddy Yankees in town asking questions. <laughs> well, you and your friend should pay him a visit, mister. He's got a big house on Flavian Street opposite the park. Hey, Yoko. Now, get out of here. Go get yourself something to eat. Sir, I want you to have this. Thanks, friend. It's nice to give something instead of just begging. So I'm highly distinct. He went on one thing. I need to ask for money.
Getting robbed? Who by? Bunch of children. <laughs> I won't inquire anymore. But I found Mr. Bronte. Seems to be some Italian Mr. Big in town. Everybody knows him, but nobody wants to talk about him. Apparently lives in a big house on Flavian Street, opposite the park. Huh. Good work. So what now? We go pay him a visit. I'll get John. You meet us there. Whatever it takes, we need to get that boy back. I cannot decide which I like less. The swamps or the city. Both are full of parasites, reptiles, and slime. We're a long way east of land we know, and far from real open country. Got the best apples here. Ain't a worm in any of them. Good morning. Oh, hello. So something sorry. else.
out of the damn way. My fault. Find out. Look out. You, kind sir, will you help the poor? I ain't so kind. Yes, you are, sir. You have it in you, I can tell. I'm a nasty bit of work, father. You're wrong on two counts, sir. I'm a humble brother, a penitent monk, not a priest, and you're a magnificent bit of work. You may have made some, some poor choices, but which of us hasn't? <laughs> you have no idea. But you do, and God does, and that's enough for me and for him. We shall see. That we shall, sir. But why don't you hedge your bets and give two bits to the poor? There are so many who will go hungry tonight. Sure. Bless you, sir. How you getting on, anyhow? These are a somewhat apathetic lot, I'm afraid. Mm. My, um, my mentor says that America is designed to induce apathy in people. It's a wonderful insight. He must be a wise man, your mentor. <laughs> well, sometimes he's a downright fool, but, you know, usually he's the best man I know. That's wonderful. The, the thing is, I'm, well, poverty will always be with us. But slavery, I, I thought we had banished that. Like saint -Denis is acting as a staging post for shipping slaves out to some of the islands. I don't believe you. It's 1899. Maybe you should take a look for yourself. I've heard that the pawnbroker down the block around the corner, the one with the green door, well, they say he sells more than forlorn trinkets. Help the poor. It's just through the market. There's the left. Hello again. Whoa, Whoa, best look out. Hey, look out. Yeah. Oh, oh, Hi there, mister. Uh, feel free to browse. Shall do. A bit of a strange question, but you heard tell of slavers around here, buddy? What? Where are they? Who? People you're hiding. I know they're here. Don't lie to me. Please. They made me do it. I was always good to them, but they, they, they forced me to do it, sir, I swear. Where are they? Uh, the, there's a door behind the bookcase there. Just pull the big red book called The Skirt of Crossbreeding by Harold McDougall. This is my brother's store. I I'm just watching it while he's away. Cállate, cállate. Por favor, ayúdanos. Help, please. Por, por favor. No sé aquí. Ayúdanos. Please, I'm on your side. It's gonna be okay. That's it. Come on. You'll be safe soon.
this way. Not much farther. Poor bastards. ¿Quién es este hombre? No lo sé. Estamos libres y eso es lo que importa. Tenemos que confiar en él. Brother, Brother Dorkin's friend, Arthur, Arthur Morgan. Come on, you were right. I found these two imprisoned in that shop. Oh my, that's, well, they are blessed to have met you, Arthur. Trust me in that, they're very unusual. I don't think they speak much English. My brothers, come, let's go get something to eat. Manger, comida, please. Hey, he forgot this. Oh, yes, thank you, I, uh, here. Payment for your services. I could not have freed these men myself. Give it to the poor, brother. Thank you. I will. Like I said, magnificent. Come on. Come, come, come. Come see me again sometime. I often work at the old church on Gasper Street in St. Francis. Buy me a drink, mon ami, huh? Sure, what you want? Brandy! Two brandies, bud. It's two dollars a glass. Oh, better be good then. Mm. It's the best. Thank you. Santé. <clears throat> ah, it's quite a country you're building here, eh? For well, me personally? Hmm? I don't know. What do you do? Mostly, I just shoot people. <clears throat> How very American of you. I love it. What do you do? Oh, mostly I I pose, I show off, I complain. Oh, how very friend. I know. <laughs> I am ridiculous.
Oops. <laughs> I have been all over the world. I have seen the sights, and I have discovered the one eternal truth that I am a pies. Um, how do you say? All ass. Mm. Asshole. Mm. That too. That too. <laughs> mm. Well, at least you have some self knowledge. <laughs> Where were you on your journey? Mm. All the civilized world. Painting my little pictures, meeting the locals, you know. You a painter? No, I'm a whole ass. I thought we had covered this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm. but you paint. Not according to salons at Paris. No, according to them, I cannot draw, I cannot paint, and I should go away. And so I went away. You miss Paris? Mm, that smelly, filthy place with old buildings and ghosts and shit and French people. I have that right here. Mm. I guess so. Mm. You know, uh... Arthur. Charles, you know, Arthur, don't believe in art. Mm. It's lies. Believe in women. They are the truth. Art is lies, but the vagina, that is truth. Breasts is truth. Art, it's for idiots. If you say so. Oh, trust me, I've tried both. One is better, much better. <sighs> so... I uh, must be boring you, uh, but here. What is it? Uh, it's just a little doodle, uh, you know, entirely worthless, unless you want to wipe your bottom with it. But I wanted to say thank you for the drinks. Well, that's very kind, Charles. Mm, no matter. Good meeting you. Mm. Please, take a seat. So what'll it be today? Sharper than attack. Just name your style. Please, tell your friends about us. Thank you very much, friend. Look out! Is someone there? Hello? Hello? Is someone there? Can you spare anything for a blind man?
<laughs> Thank you for your kindness. Reckon it's time I tried a different spot. I'm surprised no one shot you for pulling this stuff. You already took my money, all right? Just leave me alone. today. Howdy, partner. Excuse me, sir. Can I bother you for a minute of your time? All right. Can I tell you a little about what we're doing here? Sure. Less than a minute, I promise. Uh, we're trying to raise money to build an expansion to the Quincy Harris Memorial Hall. A shelter for homeless veterans and their families. Can you help? A donation of $20 would put us well on our way. $20 ain't no chicken feed, but sure, I can help you out. <gasps> That's very kind. What is your name, sir? Arthur Morgan. Your donation will be acknowledged on a founder's plaque when the building is completed. You have a great day, Mr. Morgan. There you are. You boys ready? Of course. What else do you know about this guy? Not much. Just he's some slick little greasy-haired European who's clearly got power and money. Now, listen. If we go in there and start shooting up the place, the boy's gonna get shot, that I guarantee. Better like this, you're gonna have a lot of protection. Hey, no one's gonna get shot, Arthur, so everyone just relax. We'll charm them. Trust me. This the place? <coughs> Must be. You okay, John? I guess. Excuse me, sir. We have an appointment to see Mr. Bronte. Who are you? You get your boss down here and now, so we can talk about this like gentlemen. Huh. Run along now, boy. Was that the special Dutch charm I heard so much about? Relax. You looking for a problem? I got this. straighten a couple of things out with your boss. Chi sono sti buffoni? Sono qui per picciotto. Coi soldi? Why do you take his son? Excuse me. I said, why did you take his son? We ain't got no problems with you, sir. Nor you with us. But if you want to start one, there's going to be a lot of folks dead in this room before it's done. So, you walk into my city stinking of shit and looking like this and you come into my house before you have a bath and you tell me how to act you ask me to show compassion have i not shown you almost infinite compassion already by simply allowing you to breathe in my presence indeed you have now 
We are simple country folk. All we have is each other. And you have gone and you have took his son over some dispute with some inbred ex-slavers. It ain't got nothing to do with any one of us. You had nothing to do with destroying the liquor business. We was innocent bystanders. And that which we weren't innocent of, well, we, we most surely were ignorant of. You twist words, you lie shamelessly. You think you are better than everyone else. Teodoro. <laughs> Not the barest woman here. Angelo Bronte. <laughs> Dutch Vanderlyn. Uh, Arthur Morgan. Uh, the pleasure is mine. John Marston. <laughs> All mine, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. So, uh... Can my friend have his son? Of course, of course. <laughs> but uh, should I be out of pocket over a misunderstanding? Oh, of course I know you would not want that, huh? No. No, no, no. So how about this? You perform a simple job for me, and you get your son back. What is it? A couple of people have taken to grave robbing in this cemetery. Well, that is a fine place for it, the best. <laughs> I love this guy. I love you. <laughs> See, they've taken not only to desecrating the dead, but they've done so without paying a tribute to the living. Thing is, they see my men, of course, they run a mile. So maybe you two head off, huh? And you, Mr. Van der Lind, well, you tell me more about my manners. <laughs> Salute. Salute. Come on, girl. Grave robbers? You think he's taking us for a fool? No idea. What choice do we have? None, I guess. This is idiotic. Yeah! You know where the cemetery is? I think so. Pretty sure I rode by it earlier. It's real impressive. You know, you did good. Holding your tongue in there. Do you trust one word that comes out of that bastard's mouth? We don't even know where Jack is. Listen, we found Bronte. We got in there. Dutch is with him now. All things considered, it could have gone a lot worse. That poor kid. I ain't been a good father to him. I hope... He's okay. He'll be fine. I figure... The Braithwaite's were going to hold Jack Branson for all the money we cost him. They must have sent him here so we couldn't get to him. But Bronte knows by now there's no Braithwaite's left to pay him. Jack ain't much use to him anymore. Let's just get this done and let Dutch handle the rest. I just hope you're right. Yeah. Okay. I think this is it. Keep it down. Let's hitch the horses up ahead. We should go on foot from here, Arthur.
Come on. Let's just get the... Come on. Let's find him and get the hell out of here. They expect anyone to rest in peace when they even buried him in the ground. Is that what you want, Marston? Peace? One day. Okay, I'll lead. You watch behind me. doing this I know but he won't care once we get the boy back that bastard better keep his word what? hey there boy someone's here somewhere come on Bastards are trying to draw us out. Be around here someplace. Okay, but we'll need to be quick. We can't go back to Bronte empty handed. Let's have a look where they first shot at us from. <sighs> Robbing grave robbers. We've hit the big time. Think there might be something in here. Got it. Good. Now 
Let's get out of here. Shit, it's the law. Let's go. Maybe we can get out that gate. It's locked. We'll have to go back the way we came. Damn it. Come on. We best stick to the side. Damn, the law's here. Come on, let's see if that gate's open. Locked. Let's just track back to where we came in. Damn it. Hey there. Oh, <laughs> 
Shit! It's the law! Let's go! Maybe we can get out that gate! Locked! Let's just track back to where we came in! Damn it! Come on, quick. Let's get back to Dutch. All right, girl. This is done. Well, you took your time. Jack! Where's your host? Ah! Like I said, you took your time. Ah! I'm glad to see you. Let's get going. What a fine man. Hey, friend. Uh, thank Mr. Everything. Bronte you all for right? everything. Yeah, I'm fine. Come on. You know, Arthur, Mr. Bronte has invited us to a garden party at the mayor's house. <laughs> and us, just simple country boys. Let's go! We have a new man set up, Jack. You're gonna love it. All right, let's get this boy back to his mother. You sure you're okay, son? I'm fine. Papa Bronte said you'd come for me. I'm... I'm sorry. What for? For that. For taking so long. I had a fun time. I had my own room with a big bed and a toy box. And lots of books. Did they do anything to you? Have you ever had spaghetti? What? What's that? It's food. It looks like worms, but it's delicious. Is that right? Papa Bronte teach me lots of Italian words. Don't call him that, please. You know, cavallo? That means horse. And fantafola? That's a slipper. A slipper? They gave me two pairs. One for day and one for night. Well, I'm just glad you're all right. Oh, yes. I had the best time. But I can't wait to see Mama. Did she miss me? She sure did. Like you wouldn't know.
Abigail! Abigail! We got you, your son. Everything. We got him! Mama! He's fine. I'm fine, Mama. They fed me good. <laughs> Italian food. Did you ever eat that? Come here, you silly boy. <laughs> you got him. You got my son back. Dutch, Arthur, thank you. Thank you. I got my son back! Jack, Jack, Jack. How are you, boy? I'm fine, thanks. Everything's okay now. Abigail? Can I go play now? <sighs> so, well, we met Mr. Bronte. <laughs> he is, uh, quite a character. Is he now? You ever meet an Italian strong man before? <sighs> Not outside of a circus. Well, let me tell you all about him. John, you go be with your family. Arthur. Thank you. Boys, we got some work to do. Interesting work. But first, let's have a drink. <laughs> we got Jack back. <laughs> well, the boy's safe, thank goodness. Everyone thank you, Arthur. I... <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. Thank you. I understand. Come on. Do as Dutch says. <clears throat> Go be with your family. Back him! Come on, come on in here! <laughs> He's back, all right! <laughs> hey, make some room for John there. Loitering suspiciously as usual. I, I'm just trying to give you all your moment. Wow, well, very kind. Okay, I'll catch you later, then. Sure, be good now. You okay, Sadie? Sure. You boys did good. Well, we got lucky this time. You're not joining in? Not really in the mood. Okay. You ain't joining the party, Reverend? I don't want to ruin it. I'm feeling sorry for yourself.
keep an eye on him and we all stay together. You know, the honor roll. My dear Arthur, I hope this letter finds you well. I wanted to thank you for your help with Jamie. He and Daddy are still arguing, but I understand that Jamie is thinking about going back to college. Whatever happens, I believe you saved his life and we are all truly grateful. Oh, Arthur, I have made such a mess of my life time and again. Why can I not change and be the woman I want to be? Why couldn't you change and be a man and put down all those fantasies that shroud your judgment? Life is very confusing, and I see now that I'm not very good at it. I'm afraid we've got ourselves into another mess. It's not my fault, but I need your help. I'm staying at the Hotel Grand in San Denis. Oh, Arthur. I know it is wrong to ask you, but I have nobody else, and for what we once had together, I beg of you, even though I am ashamed to do. Abigail. Hi. How's it going? Horrible. Ah, uh, it'll be okay.
Stay away from that whip. Mr. Morgan. Still working, Mr. Strauss. What you been up to? Trying to wrap up our accounts before we leave, Mr. Morgan. So you'll be joining us in Tahiti? I uh, rather fancied Australia. A similar kind of people to us. Lots of opportunity. That tells me we're going to be ranchers. Perhaps, but um, so far we have not raised many cattle. No. So, Mr. Morgan. Will you help me finalize our business here? <coughs> this is filthy work. We'll need money in Australia. Uh, for cattle and feed, I mean. Why flinch now? You never have done before. I don't know. Well, here they are. Some fishermen by the name of Davison, Algie Davison, living in a place called Catfish Jackson near Scarlet Meadows. A fisherman. And? That's it. We're a union built on that, you know. Yeah. Okay. God, what did I drink last night? Morning. I feel like shit warmed up. Hello, Mary Beth. Oh, how are you, Arthur? Fine. How are you? Um, well, I'm well, I think. It's been quite a run we've had, but, but we're still alive. Mm. So, no regrets? Regrets for what? Well, for joining this band of maniacs. <laughs> If you're a girl without means in this world, life is very scary. You boys care for me before no one cared for me. Well, life weren't very nice, Arthur. Not after Mama got typhoid, and that was a long time ago. Sure. What about you? <clears throat> I heard you ran into that married girl. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And? You got me thinking how that all ended. Long time ago now. What happened? 
Unless she didn't love me enough, I guess. Or I wouldn't change. Huh. Well, she was a fool then, Arthur. Well, she put a lot of good years in on an outlaw. She definitely was a fool. In these books, life seems so simple, but in reality, I, I can't make head nor tail of it. Mr. Morgan! Mr. Morgan, we have a problem. A real problem. It's Tilly. What? She's oh. been taken by them Foreman brothers she used to run with. Come along! The Foreman brothers? What are they doing here? Well, I don't know what they've been doing here, but I can tell you what they're going to be doing here. Dying. Sure. Do we need more guns? You and I can handle this, Arthur. Where are we heading? I'll tell you on the way. Just get going. Yeah! All right, head for Rhodes. And quick. She's in Rhodes? No. She's at a place called Bradley's house, just west of there. How do you know? When we first got here, she told me she was worried that our camp was near a safe house that gang she ran with used from time to time. And you told Dutch? No. She spoke to me in confidence. I suppose I didn't think it would be a problem. And now it is. Oh, yes. Well, what do they want with her anyway? I think I saw one of the foremans hassling her in Valentine. Yes. They probably followed us down here. You don't know what happened? She killed one of them, for good reason, but clearly they don't see it that way. <laughs> Tilly? Yes. Young Tilly Jackson isn't as sweet and innocent as you might think. But like I say, she was defending herself. She fled and fell in with us right after that. I just hope we can get to her in time. It's not too far. If they've touched a single hair on that girl's head, I will eviscerate the sons of bitches. See? You do care, Miss Grimshaw. Of course I care. About all of you fools. Some just require a firmer hand than others. You especially. Okay, I think that's the place up ahead. I think there's a guard. I'll deal with him. some hell. Oh, get out of here. Oh, I see that kindly face of yours, and I know that for the right inducement, a gentleman such as yourself could be mighty kind. Now oh, get out of here. Oh, now you keep saying that. But you don't mean nothing by well, I it. I said... You said your last word. Well, what are you waiting for? Get in there and find our girl. <laughs> She thought it's okay. All right, let's go. Oh, come along, miss. Thank you, both of you. What happened? It was Anthony Foreman. He thinks he owns me. I remember. Where is he? He went out hunting or something. There were five of them, I think. Well, we killed those fellas there. There they are. Come on. Tilly, grab that gun. Anyone approaches, shoot them. Oh, don't worry. I'll be just fine. Now catch that uh, bastard. Uh, the one in front of the boat. Another thing coming. 
so we can all have a nice little chess. I'm gonna head over there now to check she's okay. With pleasure. Thanks for the introduction, Anthony. Is that Foreman with an A? I want the Undertaker to spell it right. Funny bastard. Shut the hell up. Funny bastard. <laughs> Who are you running with? She didn't tell you? She didn't tell me nothing. Oh. This rope is cutting into me. Don't feel so good when you're the one tied up, does it? She killed my goddamn cousin. Watch you, bastard. She killed my goddamn cousin. Oh, don't worry. You'll be seeing him soon enough. What are you gonna do with me? I ain't sure yet. Reckon I'll let Tilly decide what you deserve. You're wasting your time with that girl. She's a liar. She'll screw you over like she did me. I should have shot the bitch yesterday like I said I would. You just shut your mouth now, Anthony. I've heard enough. Son of a... Your man. Bring him here. Dump him on the ground here. I want to get a good look at this monster. 
So he's still alive then? Ah. Yes. You see this girl? You leave her alone. She killed my cousin. Your goddamn cousin had it coming, Anthony Foreman. I don't care if she shot your daddy and cooked your mama for breakfast. She's mine. She ate yours. You know, a friend of mine, he always says, <clears throat> revenge is a fool's game. Now, you want all your boys dead? She had her reasons. We was family, Tilly Jackson. You foreman boys ain't no kind of family I want. Kill him, Arthur. You want that? I want him to go away and tell the remaining of his cousins and the clowns he rides with to leave me alone. Now, you think you can do that, Anthony? Or should I slit your throat and just save us all the bother? I'll leave you alone. History. Done. History is never done. It's your call, Arthur. But I'd slit his throat. Go on. Finish the bastard off. Sadly, I agree with you. <laughs> Sorry, partner. We can't take no chances with the likes of you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't rush me, I'll get to you. Thanks, partner. How do you do, sir? Yep, that's the word in town.
Looking horse there. If you want me to keep that overnight, there's room in the stable. If you ain't got papers, I can't give you much. I've been burned before. Good saddle is almost as important as a good horse. I got one of them myself. Always good to have one of those. Hey, it costs more for a reason. Adding on to a saddle helps personalize it. once last year a cat that's a nice addition on a saddle <laughs> I got one of them myself always good to have one of those Careful trims, and this horse will look just fine. Yup, looking mighty fine. Yeah, grooming a horse sure makes it a beauty.
That's a good looking horse now. You sure? Don't know if I'd want to be hollering after a horse with that name. Let's get him switched out then. Best to have a good saddle that'll hold up. Adding on to a saddle helps personalize it. That's a nice addition on a saddle. <laughs> Good saddles is almost as important as a good horse. Some grooming goes a long way. Looks nice. looking it's nice to give a little special grooming Too many Federals come through. But I got some horse in. You. Medicine. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Just tried that plan over there. And it was like a gunshot. Oh. The one with the pink flowers, tiny little bastard. Steer clear. Thanks, mister. I owe you my life. Some things you learn the hard way. Yeah. You can Let's go, girl. Say that again.
Where are you going? Let me vote. Like this. Let me vote. Hello. Good to have you. Now what's going on in here? People around here come in just for those. And there we go. I take pride in my selection here. Everything here is of exceptional quality. Sure. Come now, don't doubt yourself. That looks excellent on you. You'll be getting a little more attention from the fairer sex wearing that. A properly worn vest always commands respect. Well, pardon my saying, but you look right handsome in that. You might just be the best looking man in town wearing that. 
Excluding yours truly, of course. That is a local favorite. I feel almost human. Let me know what I can do to help you leave here feeling good and looking great. Oh, that's beautiful. My, my, I really think it's perfect for you. Oh, my man, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said to me, haven't I met you somewhere else? Hello. Bonsoir, monsieur. So, what do you think? Wearing it out? Are you feeling good? Because you're looking great. How are things with you? People around here come in just for those. I have plenty more great items. Time flies.
Please peruse at your leisure. I carry only the finest items. We are closing now. If you have anything you'd like to buy, please let me know. Now, let me have a look. A good coat could save your life. A great coat will look good doing it. We have styles for all persuasions, but I'm sure you'll look good in anything you choose. I stand behind everything I sell in this place, so you can purchase with confidence. I only stock the best in my shop. Buy from me, and you'll never be disappointed. And well, that I'm not in a rush today. If you're still making your selections, I could stay open a little longer. Hello. Time flies. Howdy, sir. Move! We are departing soon. Everyone on board. Y'all, I don't like Careful, the big man. Same thing else, man. Yeah. Here we go. Join the game if you like, gentlemen. I best not look at my watch and find out how long I've been here. Mister? I'll see you. Forgive me. It's all I can afford. Bastard. Check. That's what I got. I call. Pathetic. Fair enough. All right. All right. Yes. Je vous salue. Well, hmm. all right, ah. Uh -huh. 
All right. I hear young Pushhair's son does not have his father's eyes. Well, I'll be. Shall we just play a little more? Thanks. Much obliged. <sighs> I trust everything is well. I'm doing very well. Bien le bonjour. How things with you? Mm -hmm. Not bad. Why, hello. Here, just a little. All right. Now this is that Italian swarm recently alighting on our heads. No one to meet. Should have known. Yeah. Huh. New today would be a good one. Hey, good looking. That's the rogue over there. Right. What Let's is keep this up? I see you brought your yeah. luck with you. It's the getting away from it all more than anything, right? Too mm. Something's off. <clears throat> All right. Morning. All right. Check. Nah. Oh, well. No thanks. Boom. Care to go a little higher? I'll give this much. Sure. This is getting fun, ain't it? Right, sure. Are we playing a game here or what? Okay. Feeling rich, huh? Well, don't worry. You won't for long. <laughs> Let's see what happens, huh? I don't believe it. All, going had to All in. Close. We couldn't compete with the 15 immigrants. What who are a load of garbage. Ah, uh, god damn it! <laughs> Just my time, I guess. God damn it! I'm through with this. Bye then. That's the rogue over there. What a deplorable human being. That's all I got. I'll call. Calling. Not just a little wager. Maybe get a drink in you. Loosen you up. Oh, for the love of God, no. Sure, you're fun. Just stare that fella yeah. down. Yeah. Probably oh, enough trouble uh, around here. Check. Are we? So, yeah. I'm a play slow. Huh? So here. Thought I had That's something a for a minute. Come on! What a deplorable well. human being. Uh, yes, come on! Okay. My luck is officially just turned. Well, now. Choice with you. <sighs> Fair enough. Huh. Mm -mm -mm. Yes.
I fold. I'll see you. More flavor for the pot. <sighs> okay. <gasps> Raise. Get that bastard from before. Even Here. If he offers me five hundred dollars, I turn him Being down. Being a little shy. Oh. This place. Oh, I'll raise that. This will do for me nicely. See ya. Sarah came out of her room crying. She's too young. I'll say. Woo! Raise. Call. What do you think of this? I ain't got much. Not too bad, huh. eh? Well Get done. Bastard from before. Huh. Even if he offers me five hundred dollars, I turn him. New today would be a good one. Another one round. Let's do it again. On the same beat as mine Here, last week. Just a little. Always feels strange. Yankee. I know. It ain't too exciting. Maybe get a drink in you. I just a little wager. I'm a play slow. Huh? There. Thought I had something for a minute. Yes, yes, yes! Well? Now that's what I'm talking about. Beats working in a factory. Woohoo! Got that right. Woo. Sorry, Emmett. You won with that trash? <laughs> Woo, boy, that's how you do it. from before even if he offers me five turn him down really there feeling good huh nah here we go huh Yeah, I know. Pretty pathetic. Being a little shy. Forgive me. It's all I can afford. Sure. Bonjour, monsieur. Uh, there. Thought I had something for a minute. Ha! 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 It's so rare nowadays to meet okay. a woman. I best not look at my watch and find out how long I've been here. Thanks. Uh, how about that? Beggars, Beggar's belief. There we go. I 
I know. That ain't too exciting. Huh. More flavor for the pot. I'm a seed. For a minute. Okay. <clears throat> well, yeah. Come to me. Busy day. Come on. Let's keep this up. Just luck. Come on. You got this. I'm a play slow. What's the matter? Intimidated? Nah. You know, I think our dear Randall's been dipping his dick in the billiard. <laughs> in the land in the sunglass. Placing this. Not just a little wager. Uh... No. That's how the true term. Check. I reckon all in. <laughs> Have a look at these. A real washout <laughs> out here. <laughs> Shit. Mm hmm. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm spent, I'm afraid. All right, until next time. Forgive me, it's all I can afford. Maybe get a drink in you, loosen you up. That's what I got. All right. Oh, c'est scandaleux. Yeah, I know. Pretty pathetic. Feeling a little shy? Bon pas. Ah. Let's have a little fun, shall we? Huh? There. Would you look at that? Garbage. Oh, that's a decent hand. <laughs> I'll take it. Ah, had to break sometime. But don't worry on it. Happens to all of us. I need your commentary, huh? Here, just a little. I'll raise. I'll call. I know. It ain't too exciting. Maybe get a drink in you. Loosen you up. Okay. My old villa was a flop. Heaven knows where I'll find another as good. Not just a little wager. This'll do for me nicely. That's all I got. All right. He's all full. C'est un scélérat. Not too bad, eh? Not much. <laughs> Great hand. All right. All right. 
What do you think of this? Very good. Mm -mm. That was fun. Hey, but I think I'm good. going to quit. So, uh, you, you need something? Hey, easy. Hey, folks. What a morning. Mais bonjour, monsieur. Uh, bonjour. Monsieur. Well, what can I do for you? remember you. I hope you took my advice and forgot all about that matter that you were inquiring on when you were last in here. For sure. I don't want to leave something well alone. Would you like help in there? Yeah, okay. Sure. Very well. Relax and I'll do my best. Might not even recognize yourself after this. If you don't mind, don't forget to wash the rest of me. Yes, all right. Reckon that part's clean enough for now. Sure thing. Alright, maybe work on somewhere else now? Of course, honey. I reckon that bit's clean enough. Gladly. I think that should do it. I'll be seeing you. I've seen vagrants making their beds in the streets at night. Unbelievable. Folks. Hello, you. It's a bit hot to share the air like this, don't you think? Nice to see some friendly faces around here. Hello, ladies. Hey there. You should look out. Been some trouble around here. <sighs> Stay safe, all right? Bye, ma'am. Well, look at you. Watch yourself. Hey, Excuse what's me? your pleasure? Whiskey, please. How do you do? Here you go. How do you do? You're someone's driver, I assume. Uh, no. It's okay. I, I was just curious. I mean, you know I used to be able to tell a man standing with a, a single glance at his attire. <laughs> These days, with the oil men, the railway men, no, they simply don't okay. know. A millionaire can look like a farmhand. <laughs> Do you want to have a good time?
Just stare that feller down. Brought enough trouble around here. Oh, yeah? Oh, well. Thanks, partner. Hey, partner. Arthur! Arthur! Up here! You came! Yeah, I came. <laughs> so, uh, what do you need? Wait there. I'm coming straight down. Call for me, I'll come. Uh, oh, Arthur. What's wrong? Daddy. Your father? I'm a bigger fool than I even thought. I, I'm begging you, Arthur. I know Daddy was not... Please. Come along, Dan. Where are we going? What's the old lovable patriarch been up to now? Oh, Arthur, you know sarcasm is beneath you. He's been gambling and drinking and other things. Oh, the filthy rotter. Where can we find him? He said he was going down to the Theodore Eckhart stables. Something about a horse. It's down by the water in the warehouse district near the train yard. Come on, then. Don't be a pompous ass, Arthur. It doesn't suit you. Oh, should I leave that to Daddy? Leave Daddy alone. He suffers enough. Well, I suppose I can take some consolation in that. No, oh, Arthur. I should have ran away with you years ago. Well, you wouldn't. No, I didn't. But... Well... I don't know. So what do you think he's up to? I'm not sure. He keeps saying it's a disgrace a man of his standing has to ride around on some old nag. Standing? He's usually falling down. Arthur. He wasn't always this way. But it has got worse. He's drinking and gambling more than ever. Pawning things off left and right. Mixing with bad people. I'm just scared for him. Don't worry too much. This is the place. Let me go in and see what kind of a state he's in. Sure. I'll wait here. Good luck. Scream if you need any help. Very funny. can't stand there. What, in the street? Yes, in the street. Is it your street? Just get out of here. Why? I said, just get out of here. Listen, partner. I'm waiting on the lady. She's a fine lady. She's just gone inside. If I wasn't waiting on this lady, You'd be dead already. But if you continue to irritate me, I'll kill you. And make my apologies to the lady. It's your call. Oh, I didn't mean nothing. I've never been so demeaned in my life. Apology accepted. Oh, my wait daughter. right there. I have half a mind. 
to kill you myself. Daddy. No. Oh, I'm Daddy, sorry. please, come home. You're tired, Daddy, tired I and I have unwell. no such thing. You get away from me. You head home. I insist upon it. Leave me be. Damn nuisance. Excuse me, partner. Still as charming as ever, I see. Oh, Arthur. He's up to no good. We better follow him. Okay. This way. He went around the corner. Hey, stop a second. You're too close. Oh. Hey, stop. Wait, Arthur. You can see why he has such a high opinion of himself. Arthur, we'll just follow drop the smell. back a bit or he'll Arthur. see you. Come on. He just went between those crates. Come here, huh. quick. Mind where you go. Mind where you go. Sorry? Do you think he saw us? I don't think so. What did you say to me? I didn't say a thing insulting. I'll wipe that goddamn smirk clean off your face. <laughs> Ain't you a little old for brawling, mister? Damn you! He's heading across the road. You know, this is kind of fun. Shh. He'll hear you. Have cleaned yourself up a bit. I didn't realize I was here to impress anyone. He just went left down that alleyway. What's he doing? Wait, Arthur. Any closer and he'll spot us. What's he doing? What do you think he's doing? Well, he's either waiting for a woman of dubious morals, or he's trying to sell something. So, You got the money? Seems he's selling something. Have you got the brooch, Mr. Gillis? Yes. Here. Here's the money. <laughs> mm, that is beautiful. It's a family heirloom. That was it's mother's brooch. Not any longer, Mr. Gillis. Enjoy the money. And should you need any more, I can offer you a loan at a very reasonable rate of interest. No, thank you. I've heard what happens to folks who take loans from you. It's not 
It's just a brooch. At least he didn't get himself killed. You don't understand. Mother left it to me. You sold my mother's brooch? How could you? You! That's theft! Oh, speaking of thieves, I, I see you found your outlaw again. Hello, sir. Have you been well? Daddy, how could you? Mary, wait here. I'll go get the brooch. Don't hurt anyone, Arthur. Stop the damn coach! Get back here! God damn it! Thank you. 
leave me alone. Leave me alone. It's just a brooch. I want that brooch. It wasn't Gillis's to sell. I bought it fair and square. How much do you want for it? I guess I could give it to you for a hundred dollars. Here. Yeah, take the damn thing. Crazy son of a bitch. You don't know who you're messing with. Somebody's gonna pay for it. Where's your father? I don't know. You want me to go find him again? Not really. Well, let's take a walk. I'll take you to the trolley. Thank you. Yeah, uh, got you your brooch back. Why not? It'll be fun, Arthur. How about here on the right? Sure. After you. Thank you for that. 
thunderous applause. I am Aldridge T. Abington, the greatest assembler of entertainment since Nero himself. Do not doubt. As a child, when I walked the horse manure covered streets of Saint Denis, I never dreamed of the stir I would create so, in this locality. Just as starting a proprietor or not. Are you of in a rush? The greatest Arthur? show ever assembled. Prepare for the grandest excitement of your curiosity. Fire, snakes, and magic. I encourage any of you to dabble in all three if you have a settled aversion to manual labor as I do. For entertainment is a gift that will see you through the winter better than any packed larder or root cellar full of canned goods. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a truly stunning musical performance to the stage, Miss Robin Koninsky! for joining us. Now let's talk a little bit about this place we all love called Saint Denis. Flawless, perfect. Oh, I see you, you. You love her dulcet tones, right? Yes, she is pure spectacle, and I assure you, she can charm any beast, any beast at all, from cockroach to killer whale. <laughs> Your mother most likely told you not to play with fire or to spend time in the company of strange women. You are about to do both. <laughs> Miss Antoinette Sanserino. Yeah. Stop it. Amazing.
you can see how this could go horribly wrong. I hope she stays away from the curtain. Enchanting! Mesmerizing! She is truly one to bring home to mother. <laughs> it is said that there is a place in France where the naked ladies dance. I have been there. Prepare for the body braziers of the Petit Flaneur in Gay Paris! Take me to the trolley now, Mr. Morgan. Of course. <laughs> Quite ridiculous, but shame we couldn't stay longer. Sorry. <laughs> My life wasn't supposed to... Oh. Is it too late for us, Arthur? I can't lie to you. Anyone close to me, well, they wanted to, and I can't have you wrapped up in that. But it's coming to an end. 
This time it really is. Run away with me, Arthur. Run away right now and don't look back. I want to. More than anything, I want to. But I've got some people I need to take care of. Once they're free, then I'm free. Then I can disappear. But Arthur... If we're gonna run away anywhere, we need money. And soon, I'll have some. I know you won't run away. But it's a pretty dream. Very pretty. But I will, once I get some money. And I had some. But then some fool got it trapped into a town that I can't go back to. That's another story. I'll write you. 